So, this is a topic that got a good bit of people interested. People have been asking me pretty frequently how I put together my renders for animations and have them all crisp and clean and not muddied and blurry like this. So, I feel it's important enough to make this quick little video. After all, I don't want to be running a monopoly on my own home subreddit. I want people to know how to contribute and be able to make something they want to show off as soon as possible. So, straight to it, let's dive in. I have a little scene here that I made. It's a wizard's office, got a little cat tower over here for his wing familiar, and I'm ready to render. I have my settings set the way that I wanted them. Resolution's the same as I mentioned in the first video. I have some small extra stuff like bloom and volumetric lighting. I'm cheating a little bit, obviously the PlayStation 1 doesn't have any of those things, but I'll eventually go over those things too. Now, we got to tell Blender where and how we want our scene to be saved. I'm going to go over here to the Output Settings tab, and I'm going to go and find a directory that I want to use. I normally set up a rendering folder where I keep my blend file, so I have everything together. Once I select where I want it all to be saved, we are going to go over here and pick our method of rendering. We're going to select PNG, which is going to save every individual frame of our animation as a separate PNG into our directory. Now, this may sound crazy for several reasons, but there are several reasons why we are doing this. Number one, Blender actually has a way of handling sequences of images and can compile them for you to use and render. This is the video sequencer. This is the default video editor that you can select when you boot up Blender. Blender is truly a marvelous piece of software. It has become my go-to video editor. In fact, it's what I'm using to make the series. I'll touch up on the sequencer in great depth way later. I'm only going to touch the surface enough to render our small scene properly. Now, if I hit Shift A, I can bring up the Add menu like I would if I was in the 3D port. If I select Image Sequence and I go to a directory where we have images stored, and if we hit A to select all the images and then hit Add Image Strip, it compiles them all into a video clip that we can manipulate. And this is what we're going to do with our render. Number two as for why we're using PNG sequences, when it comes to rendering animation, it's the safest way to do so. So, since we're saving every single frame as a separate PNG, we have all of the files on hand immediately. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if we were to render this as, say, an AVI or an MP4, Blender is taking the time to compile all of the frames and encode them so that you have a video file instead of image files. If we are rendering a large project like, say, for instance, this movie that was made using Blender, if Blender crashed while it was rendering, your project as a video file, it's gone and you lost that render. The encoding never finished and your video is irreparably corrupted now. It would be infuriating after waiting hours to finish a render, you suddenly lose power, and guess what? It's back to the beginning for you. However, if you render using PNG sequences, if you suddenly get crashed or lose power, you still have all of your frames saved on your hard drive, and you can restart the render where you left off. Number three why we're using PNG sequences is because it allows us to get a lossless quality. We are going to be upsizing our animation using GIMP so we can have as sharp as a render as possible. As far as I've been able to find, there isn't any way to upscale the way that we want natively in Blender. If we try to use MP4s in the video sequencers, uh, first of all, this is redundant because MP4s have compression to optimize the files, so you'd be compressing your animation twice and lose more detail than if you would have done it the way that I was recommending. But even if you had a lossless file like AVI, it would upscale your footage, but you have no way to control the interpolation of how it's upscaled, so either way, your final output would still be blurry and muddled. So, we're gonna be using PNG sequences. Once we render out our sequence, here is what we're going to do. We are going to open up our first frame. If you're familiar with how to make a GIF, it's the same process. Once it opens, we are going to make sure that our first frame is fully visible in GIMP's viewport. If we were to add our frame when our first frame is all zoomed in like this, your frames will load in off-center and you'll have to adjust them manually. And do not try to drag your frames directly into GIMP straight from the boot up or from the shortcut. Otherwise, you will have a new GIMP window for every single frame that you just tried to load. Now, once we have every frame loaded and we are all in alignment, we are going to upscale it now. We can go up here, click on the image menu, go to scale image, and if we want our animation to be HD, we can put in our Y resolution to be 1080 with interpolation set to none. We can scale our animation frames up without losing any of our definition and no blurriness. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to save this to make sure that GIMP doesn't crash when we export our project. And now we're going to export our project. There is a special image file that we are going to save this as. And no, it's not a GIF. 
A GIF is a layered image file, but it is only one image. And it's not the same as an image sequence. And I didn't mention this yet, but Blender, as far as I'm aware, doesn't support GIFs in any way. So we're going to go to export, export as, and in our directory, we are going to save this. And for our file extension, we are going to type .ora. Now, I've never heard of an Aura file until recently, but they are awesome for this. Once it's fully exported, we are going to find where our Aura file is saved, and if you have WinRAR or 7-zip, because you gotta have something to unzip ROMs to get them running on your emulator, we can right-click on our file and hit Extract Files. It will create a new folder. If we go into this folder and we open up the data folder, it will have our whole sequence saved exactly as we had it in its beautiful 1080p. Now it's only a matter of adding it to your video sequencer like I showed you. Optionally adding some sound, making sure your audio matches up with the visuals. Due to the nature of the Aura file, it builds our image sequence backwards because it loads them from the top layer to the bottom layer. So we can fix that by clicking our strip, going over here to the video dropdown, and then just tap reverse frames. We're almost ready to finalize our animation. We just now have to go to the strips menu here and click set render size. This will automatically set the render resolution to whatever our image sequence was using. So in this way, it doesn't get stretched to the 920 by 1080 that it's naturally set to. Now we have to set our end frame rate, then all we have to do is hit render. And with that, we have the final animation in its glorious final quality. It's very simple once you know how. Unfortunately for perhaps heavier projects like a movie, this might get a bit tedious to try to work with if you have to use Aura files. I'm afraid that it might cause GIMP to crash with memory problems, so you might have to break up your Aura files in 25 frame increments or whatever you feel comfortable working with, but really that's it. If this helped you and it allowed you to make your beautiful animation that you wanted, why not share it on the subreddit? I want to see what you guys are making. If you guys have any more questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section. If this series is helpful, do subscribe because there is more coming. I hope you enjoyed, and until then, see you guys next time.